Want to speak real English from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at EnglishClass101.com. Hi, everybody. My name is Alicia. In this lesson, I'm going to talk about the differences between can and could. This lesson is going to include a lot of information and some example sentences. If you want to know more about any of these points, try searching our YouTube channel for a lesson with some more detail. Okay, let's get started with the first point, number one up here. The first way to use can and could that I want to talk about is to express abilities. So an ability that refers to something we are able to do or not able to do. When we want to talk about a present ability, something we can do now, I just used can to express that, something we have the ability to do now, we use can plus a present tense verb. This expresses a present ability, something we can do now. It's possible for us to do that now. To make the negative form, we use cannot or can't. Can't. I can't do something. When we want to talk about a past ability, for example, something in our childhood or something when we were in school, we use could plus a present tense verb again. So this verb in past and present form uses a present tense in this position, this verb here. We always use a present tense verb in this position. This expresses a past ability. We know this because we're using could in this pattern. Let's take a look at a couple of examples of this. First, a pair of present tense statements. The first one here is, I can speak English. I can speak English. So a very basic pattern, hopefully many of you can use. Here we see can plus speak in this case. Speak is a present tense verb and then we have the language here. So a reminder, we use speak when we're talking about our language abilities, not I can talk or I can say, but I can speak English. Of course, we could change this to a negative. I can't speak French, for example. We can use the same pattern, just replacing can with the negative can't. can't. Let's look at a different one, though. She can't swim. She can't swim. So here my subject has changed, yes, to she. Um, there's no change here to reflect the subject. And swim, my verb following can't, remains in the present tense. So these are very basic examples of how to express our abilities with can and can't in present. So let's compare this then to using could to make past tense expressions. So as I said, could will change from can to could, but the verb does not change. Let's see how we use this. He could speak Spanish when he was a kid. He could speak Spanish when he was a kid. This is a past tense ability statement. And something you'll notice is very common in these past ability statements is a point in time or like a time period, when. So he could speak Spanish, when? When he was a kid. So you'll notice this is also in past tense, not when he is a kid, when he was a kid at that point in time in the past. It's finished now. So we'll often include a time period or a point in time in the past to help us understand this ability. One more example here. This is a negative example. We couldn't watch the movie. It was too violent. We couldn't watch the movie. It was too violent. So here, this is a past tense negative. Couldn't is the reduced form of could and not. We could not watch the movie. So we could say, yes, this is kind of like a, a possibility statement, which I'll talk about a little bit later. Uh, but we can also use this kind of expression to explain it was not possible for us to watch the movie. Like, I didn't have the ability to watch that movie. 
we might use an expression like this. So the reason here, instead of a point in time, which we probably understand from the situation, like we couldn't watch the movie last night, or we couldn't watch the movie last weekend. Instead of a point in time, I included a reason. So why couldn't I watch the movie? Or why couldn't we watch the movie? It was too violent. So it is the movie. The movie itself, this was past tense, a past situation. Violent, violent. So this means there's like maybe like action, people attacking other people, hurting other people, maybe very graphic scenes, extreme or intense images. It was too violent. So we can use couldn't to talk about these kinds of things too. I'll explain a little bit more uh, when I talk about point number three in this lesson. So this is how we use can and could for present and past tense abilities. All right, let's continue on to point number two for this lesson. Point two is using can and could for requests and for offers. So this is actually a bit simpler than this point, I think. The difference here when you're making requests and offers with can and could is just that can sounds more casual. It sounds a little bit more friendly. Could sounds a bit more polite. So both of these are okay to use in most situations. If you want to sound a little bit more formal, a little bit more polite, you can use could. In most everyday situations, we use can. So we begin our request or our offer, usually with can, and we make a question with it. There are a couple of other variations too. I'll show you a couple examples. So, Let's look at using can first. So let's begin our sentence, our question with can here. Can you help me with my homework? Can you help me with my homework? This is a request. Please help me, in other words. So instead of please help me with my homework, which sounds like a word desperate maybe, please help me, using can you is kind of like asking, do you have the ability to? help me with my homework? Is it possible? Would it be okay? So it's a bit softer than using please. So please help me. It's okay. There's not a communication problem, but can you help me with my homework? Sounds a bit nicer, a little bit more friendly. Now let's look at using can to make an offer. I can buy you a coffee if you like. So if you like is like, if you want one, if it's okay, do you want one? If you like, a nice offer expression. I can buy you a coffee. So here in the offer pattern, can comes before the verb. So again, we can think of this a little bit like an ability. So it's like the speaker is saying, right now I have the ability to buy you a coffee. Would you like a coffee? But that doesn't sound natural. It's like saying, right now this is possible. I can buy you one, so is that okay? I can buy you a coffee if you like. So this is a nice, friendly way to make an offer. Let's compare this then to using could in similar patterns. So as I said, could is going to sound a little bit more formal, a little more polite. First example is a request. Could you please send me the files. Could you please send me the files? So I've added please here to show again it's a little more formal. And in this case, perhaps it's a business situation. Maybe it's a business situation. Send me the files. So this is a work request perhaps. Maybe that's why the speaker is using could and please. You'll also notice that when I'm using could or can to create a request question, I'm following the word can or could with the person I want to help me. So in this case, I'm using you for both of my sentences. But you might hear some sentences where the speaker asks for someone else to do something. So there, this person is not in the conversation. I'm talking to someone else. I would like ask this person, please ask that person to do something. Like, can he join the meeting later, for example? 
that's something that you might hear too. For these requests, and for probably a, a lot of requests though, we use you after can or could. But you may hear he or she or they used in these patterns too. Okay, let's finish this part with an offer using could. If it's helpful, we could teach your staff about the new software. If it's helpful. If it's helpful, so again, it's a softening expression, kind of like if you like, but this sounds a little more formal. If it's helpful, if you like, we could teach your staff about the new software. So this is an offer. We are offering to teach your staff about the new software. We use could to do that. We could do this, like again, we have this ability, yes, but in this case, could is not referring to a past tense situation. We're using could to make a polite offer. We could teach your staff. So this is one example of how to do it. Okay, so this is how we use can and could to make requests and to make offers. Let's continue then. I want to move back to this side of the board to point three for this lesson. So I talked a little bit about this in point number one, but we also use uh, could to talk about present and past possibility. So first, let's look at uh, a couple of sample patterns. This is probably, I think, these two, the most common patterns you might hear to use could and could not. So first, an explanation. In many of these possibility statements, we use could plus the verb be, plus often some kind of like adjective phrase. Uh, when we make the negative form, we use could not plus the verb be plus our adjective phrase. So when we make a past tense possibility statement, we follow a similar pattern, but we use have been instead of be. So this pattern is our present tense possibility statement, a present situation. Have been, this could have been pattern, refers to a past possibility. So let's take a look at some example sentences that use these patterns. First, hmm. The meeting starts at 2, but nobody's here. I could be in the wrong place. So here is my could be. So I included this part to show the situation. Situation and context are quite important for these kinds of statements. So in this case, the speaker is waiting for a meeting that starts at 2. And the speaker is thinking to himself or herself, hmm, the meeting starts at 2, but nobody's here, so I could be in the wrong place. Another way to say that is, it's possible I am in the wrong place. Wrong means incorrect. I'm in the incorrect place. The meeting is somewhere else. So could be expresses this possibility. There's a possibility I'm in the wrong place. You might also hear might used here instead of could. I might be in the wrong place. So the difference between might and could is very small in this situation. I could be in the wrong place is very neutral. It's not like positive or negative. There's not a high chance or low chance. Just it's possible. If I said I might be in the wrong place, it sounds like there's a higher chance, like maybe 50% uh, or 60%, it's not a rule, but there's a higher chance I'm in the wrong place, like mm, I might be in the wrong place. Sounds a little bit more certain than I could be in the wrong place. So it's just the level of certainty there. So I could be in the wrong place. Let's look at another example. This one is a past situation, a past situation. It's a conversation. Person A says, hey, was that Michael? So you're on the street. Was that Michael over there in that coffee shop, for example? B says, no, that couldn't have been Michael. He's out of town, out of town. So out of town means away from the city. So here I'm using 
couldn't have been Michael. So that means that guy over there you pointed to, that couldn't have been Michael. Could not have been. This means it's impossible that was Michael. It is, n there's no chance, absolutely no chance that was Michael. I know because he's out of town. He's out of town. He's not here. So, couldn't have been means impossible. That couldn't have been Michael. He's out of town. So, we use these two patterns to express possibility. And yes, please keep in mind that this negative I've used here, couldn't have been means not possible. Not possible. So, couldn't be as well, the negative in the present form, is also reflective of an impossible situation. So here, I used the positive, could be, meaning it's just possible. But when you use the negative form, it means something is impossible. So, for example, let's imagine the speaker in this situation came to the correct place. So, the speaker looks at his or her watch and says, hmm, the meeting starts at 2 o'clock and everybody is here. I couldn't be in the wrong place. It's impossible I'm in the wrong place because everybody is here. I know I'm in the correct place. So, I couldn't be in the wrong place. I'm in the correct room. So, impossibility uh, is reflected with use of the negative form. With the positive form, it's just simple possibility, very neutral. Final point here, we make questions with this same kind of pattern. So we do this often when we're thinking, like thinking to ourselves. So I'm alone and I'm thinking to myself about something or when I need to confirm something with someone else. So an example. Could this be the correct building? So, could this be the correct building? I would use this if I'm like checking my phone, checking the GPS on my phone, searching for a place. I have a meeting, something. I'm looking around and I think this building is correct. I think to myself, mm, could this be the correct building? So, that's a, that's a sentence or a question a native speaker might say. Um, I feel in most situations, though, we just say, is this the correct building? We just say it with is. Could this sounds more like, is it possible this is the correct building? So it might sound a little bit more formal. I feel like in everyday speech, more commonly we say, is this the correct building? But you might sometimes hear could used in this kind of pattern. Uh, let's look at one more example. Could I have made the wrong decision? Could I have made the wrong decision? So again, the speaker is thinking about something in the past, uh, or maybe they're speaking to a friend. Could I have made? We know this is a past expression because of this grammar right here. Could I have made? Have made shows us that this is something the speaker chose, chose to do in the past. So could I have made the wrong decision? Could be the speaker thinking out loud to himself or herself, is it possible I made the wrong decision? Or the speaker could be asking someone else, could I have made the wrong decision? And they're expecting some kind of opinion. So we're using these patterns to talk about possibility. So you might hear some questions that use could in this way. Uh, but keep in mind these are a little bit different from these offer type questions we talked about. Okay, let's move along then to point number four for this lesson. Point number four is about unreal situations, unreal situations. So when we use could with unreal situations, there are a, quite a few patterns that we can use. Um, but I wanted to introduce just a couple of very um, kind of simple ways that we use this. So I've I've made just this very simple um, pair of if clause and main clause, uh, and I've got here main clause with could. So a point to be careful of is when you're making your unreal statement and you're using this if something something main clause something something pattern, make sure your could 
is in your main clause. We do not use could in the if clause. So no could goes here. Your modal verbs in general, don't put them in the if clause. Put them in the main clause. So that means like will, won't, may, might, all those words. Put them in your main clause. Could as well. So there are a few different patterns that we use with unreal situations. So I want to talk about these two. Uh, they have a little bit of challenging grammar, so let's take a look. First one, if I won the lottery, I could buy a house. If I won the lottery, I could buy a house. Here's my if clause. If I won the lottery, comma, I could buy a house. So here is could. So could is used, yes, to talk about this unreal situation. So we know it's not real because of this if right here. So that means I have not won the lottery. Uh, by the way, lottery is a game. So we can win a large money prize uh, by chance. So we buy a card or a ticket and maybe we get a large prize for that. It's a game, uh, kind of gambling. Anyway. Uh, if I won the lottery, meaning I have not won the lottery, but if I did, I could buy a house. So this could is reflective of this possibility point, or kind of you can think of it as this ability point too, a little bit. Um, but it means I would be able to. So I would have lots of money, so it would be possible to buy a house. So we use could to reflect that. If I won the lottery, I could buy a house. Possibility here. So we do not use can in this case. We use could because it's an unreal situation. We don't use this can to talk about these unreal situations. Please use could here. Let's upgrade a little bit, more challenging grammar here. If clause again, if we had finished work earlier today, if clause, if we had finished work earlier today, we could have gone to the movie theater. We could have gone to the movie theater. So this is a very challenging sentence to understand. Let's take a look. If we had finished work earlier, earlier today, earlier than we did. So we finished work at 8 p.m. But if we had finished, so this is referring to a past action, it's complete. If we finished work, or if we had finished work at 5 p.m., for example, earlier than we finished, we actually finished at 8, but if we had finished earlier, maybe 5, we could have gone to the movie theater. So could have gone. This use of could refers to an activity in the past, a possible past activity that would have been possible if this part were true. So again, to recap, we finished work at eight. We could not go to the movie theater in this situation. But if we finished work earlier, if we had finished work earlier, for example, 5 p.m., in that situation, which is not real, did not happen, we could have gone to the movie theater. It would have been possible. So we use these kinds of uh, sentences to talk about all this stuff in the past that did not happen, but we just want to dream about it. So this is an example of how we use could. And again, we use could here, not can. We make a past tense example, or a past tense pattern rather, by using have plus the past participle form of the verb. So again, a challenging grammar point, but this is one we use a lot to dream about uh, past situations. Okay, let's finish this lesson with point number five, kind of a small point. So I want to go back to point two here. We talked about using can and could to make requests and offers. Another thing you might hear is using can't and couldn't to make suggestions. So. You'll notice all of these use the negative form. So the difference here is that when you use the positive, as we talked about in point two, positive form sounds a bit more like a request. It's like you want something. When you use the negative though, it's like you're giving something. You're giving a suggestion. So using the can is a little more like you're pulling maybe information or you're pulling something. 
using can't is like you're, you're giving a suggestion or you're giving advice. So we use can't or couldn't in the same way that we use can and could to sound a bit more polite. And we often pair this, uh, we often use this together with just. Just is like a, is a modifier, it changes the feeling to sound like simpler or a little more gentle, like just a simple suggestion, just a small suggestion. So can't you, for example, you is very common here as I talked about in these patterns, but we can use he, she, they, we, and so on. Um, plus, for present tense uh, situations, for present tense um, sentences, suggestions, we use a present tense verb here. For couldn't, we can talk about, again, present tense situations, or we can imagine, as we did here, we can imagine a past tense situation, and you want to give advice, you want to give a suggestion about that past situation. You can do that with couldn't plus past participle verb form, as we did here. So, some examples of this. First, can't you just leave earlier? Can't you just leave earlier? So someone who is always late, for example. Can't you just leave earlier? You could remove just, that's okay. Can't you leave earlier? But just softens it. It's like, this is a small suggestion. Can't you just leave earlier? Another one, couldn't you just call to confirm? Couldn't you just call to confirm? It's a small suggestion. So sounds a little more polite because we're using couldn't here. Finally, couldn't you have created a bigger budget for the project? Couldn't you have created a bigger budget for the project? So the, this is another past tense situation. So we're dreaming here again. So couldn't you have created shows us this was a past thing that someone did, the listener did. So the speaker created, or sorry, the listener created a budget for the project. The speaker is saying, couldn't you have created a bigger budget for the project? So this is giving a suggestion, or rather the speaker's opinion about a choice or a decision the listener made in the past. So we use these negative forms to give suggestions, to give advice, to give opinions, uh, not so much requests or offers. Okay, so that's a lot of information, a lot of different ways to use can and could. And also there are some patterns, there are many patterns uh, that I did not talk about in this lesson. So you can try to, I think, use these five points maybe to understand a little better um, the different uses of can and could as you listen and as you read as well. So I hope that this is helpful for you. Again, if you want to know more about any of these points, you can try searching our YouTube channel to see if there's another whiteboard video specifically about one of these points. So please take a look at that. Uh, if you enjoyed this lesson too, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel as well. Uh, don't forget to check us out at EnglishClass101.com for some other things that can help you with your English language studies. And also, if you have any questions or comments or if you want to practice making some example sentences, please feel free to do so in the comment section of this video. Okay, thanks very much for watching this lesson and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye. Want to speed up your language learning? Take your very first lesson with us. You'll start speaking in minutes and master real conversations. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Just click the link in the description.